Good afternoon. Welcome to our after school session called Get to Know Your Mac. Today we're going to be covering the control center, the dock, and the menu bar. Um, we actually have a little visual for you, so I should probably take a minute to show you this one more time. <laughs> we'll be going over the menu bar, the control center, and the dock. We'll go ahead and get started with the dock. Okay, so real quickly, the dock is the space inside of your Mac where it houses the most commonly used applications that you may use daily, or sometimes there's even applications that we don't use. Well, we can customize our dock. One of uh, the things that we recommend when you're getting started with your Mac is to remove any of the items that you don't use. So I already removed these when uh, preparing for the session, but I would recommend <laughs> removing FaceTime, removing messages, um, and maybe even removing the app store. And so how do you remove an item that you're not using? We simply click on, well, click on the, I, I did a hard click, sorry. Click on the application. And then if you head over to options, one of the options you have is remove from dock. I'm gonna remove this one. The other easy thing you can do is just click and drag an item straight out. When you drag that application out of the dock, you'll see remove. And then if you let go, it removes the application from the dock. It does not remove it from your computer. It's still there. But again, these kind of think of like your shortcuts, the applications that you're gonna use, and you wanna always be able to see those things. So the other neat thing that we can do with our dock is we can rearrange the order. And so I like to keep all of my browsers together, right? My Safari, my Edge, and my Chrome. If they are out of order, um, simple enough. You just take the application and you move it in that order. So sometimes um, when I'm working on projects, I might put certain applications right next to each other. Um, like all my creative apps, except I move pages out of the way. I kind of keep those things together um, so that it's easy for me to find and locate. So you can customize your dock in that way. And another way to customize your dock is by adding anything that, again, you use on a daily basis into your launch pad. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the launch pad. I'm hoping that you see it. You do. I'm going to bring pages back in because I would be so sad if I didn't have pages inside of my dock. There we go. And uh, the method for doing this is just a click and a drag right back into your dock. And you're looking for a space to move over. So I'm going to bring books in. Click, drag. And I want to pull this between, uh, say, my numbers and GarageBand. When those applications move over, then you can let go. And you'll know that it's going to be housed right here into your dock. Um, as a teacher um, who is working with students that um, have way too many things on their dock, I'll also recommend to my students to clear out some of those things that they can't use. Like again, the app store is not functional functioning on the student Mac. So I'll tell them to go ahead and take a moment and drag that item that's taking up space out of the, the dock. Um, and so those are recommendations that I have. All right, so there's more that you can do with your dock. So I'm gonna head over to the system preferences and we can change the size and the location of our dock and something called magnification. Um, so head to system preferences. And on your new Mac, you're going to notice that there is an icon right here called Dock and Menu Bar. I'm going to click inside of the Dock and Menu Bar. And here you're going to see the dock. I've got my little cursor over it, the dock. And we can ma manipulate the size of the dock. So depending on how many applications you have on the bottom, I'm going to head all the way down to small. And so if you're working with students and you can't see any of the applications at the bottom in the dock, you know what they did. Or you can go with large. Mine um, does not appear to be getting very large, but it's because I have so many applications on the bottom, or sorry, in my dock. So I'm gonna head back over to medium. Um, this next one is called magnification. Right now I have magnification turned on. So you notice that when I hover over my applications, they get larger. You can turn that magnification on pretty large if you need. Oh, there's pages, keynote, numbers, right? Um, and if you don't like that magnification, you can just click to turn it off. And when you head down to the dock, nothing happens. But I really like that effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back on. All right, the last uh, few things here as far as position. Um, sometimes when teachers are sharing their screen, they really need to get to this bottom space inside of their dock. And so sometimes they prefer, I want it on the left-hand side. Maybe you're using Promethean board, or I want the dock on the right-hand side. Or sometimes it accidentally uh, moves that way. Can you guys see my dock? You can't, right? Darn, um, okay, well, 
my uh, my doc is floating on the side <laughs> and you can't see it where I'm sharing it, but just trust me, um, it'll move from either the top, the bottom, the left or the right. So when you saw it disappear, that's what happened. Okay, continuing on, there's a couple things that I want you to know exist. I don't really wanna go through them all because I feel like you can play with them, um, but you do have some options for how you might wanna see items coming in and out. So for example, this is just minimizing windows. So if I click on my PowerPoint, when I click the yellow button, it minimizes. That's a genie effect. The scale effect just pulls it down. Okay, so you can choose that. Here is a double click a window title bar to zoom. Um, I have this checked off. Uh, I really like this feature, but let me show you what it does. I have um, my OneNote open. And today I attended a session on Pear Deck, so I was taking some notes. But when you have that checked off, and if you're like me and you resize windows, um, so I was like in two different places working, um, and maybe I needed to take a screen capture and drop something over, but now all of a sudden I need my notebook to be large. If you double click on this window here, it will change it into a full screen because you have that checked off. And then, or I say full screen, it's not that full screen mode, but it makes that window full size. So click again and it goes back. So click two times, I'll click on my browser goes full and I click again twice and it goes back. So that's this feature right here. If you double click a Windows title bar to zoom, but you can also change it to something like minimize, but I love that zoom feature. Um, let's see, this one I, I turned on and I really don't like it. It's called minimize windows into the application icon. So what I want you to notice is that when I click PowerPoint, my PowerPoint is gonna open. When I minimize my PowerPoint, it's going to go into PowerPoint. So I don't even know that it's opened, right? Um, the other application or option is the way my old MacBook was set up, which is I'll uncheck this box. And now when I minimize my PowerPoint, watch how it does not go into PowerPoint. It heads to the far right and it shows me that I have it over here. So that's something to pay attention to. If you're kind of want a minimal look over here, then you might check that off so that everything closes into the application. But if you're like me and you want to see all of the 30 things that you're working on, you might um, uncheck that. <laughs> That's a personal preference there. Um, okay, animate the opening of applications is the bounce that you'll see when you launch an application. I like that, so I have it turned on. If I click, for example, iMovie, it bounces. That's the animation it's talking about. So you can choose whether you want to see that animation or uh, you would not like to see that. Um, I'm going to quit out of iMovie here in a moment. There we go. This little spinny wheel because I've been working hard in iMovie. Of course, it would have um, a moment. Okay. All right. Um, this is another feature that uh, is good for teachers to know about for themselves, but also if you have students who hide your doc. So I have my doc always showing, but again, if you're presenting to students, you may want that to automatically hide so that you have a nice clear screen. And then when you bring your cursor all the way down to the bottom of the screen, the dock will appear. And so that's the automatically high, but you can always get it back by taking your cursor down to the bottom and then navigating. Okay, that's actually my preference, so I'll leave that on. Um, this, this check here that says show indicators for open applications. When you come down to your dock, you're gonna notice there's a dot underneath every single application that's running. So my Microsoft Teams is running, my Google Chrome's is, is running, my notes are running. If you don't wanna see those little dots, you can check off this box and they'll disappear. And then lastly, um, for the dock, you have show recent applications in the dock. That's this space right here. So you have a line and this shows you all of the applications you've added to the dock. This line here is designating those applications that you've used recently. And then this line, these are the items that we either have like our um, downloads, our documents, and anything that we've minimized here. OK, so if you don't want to see this, you'll just check that off um, and those recent applications won't appear. OK, do you guys have any questions so far about customizing your doc? OK, and I'm going to keep moving. Um, the next feature I wanted to share with you guys is the control center. So. The control center is up here at the top of your computer on the right hand side. It's a new icon that um, that has appeared inside of the Monterey operating system. And so when you click on the control center, you're going to notice that 
let me click on it, that you have some shortcuts for things that you're gonna want access to a lot as a teacher. For example, the Wi-Fi. And every time you hover over any of these icons, there's really a little carrot that will give you more choices. So right now I'm connected to EPISD Secure, but if for some reason I needed to switch networks, I could click that carrot and it's gonna give me more information or allow me to head on over a shortcut to network preferences so that I don't have to go to system preferences and dig and find my way to get to the Wi-Fi settings here. Okay, the same goes for Bluetooth. If I click that, I can choose to join um, or add another Bluetooth device or go to Bluetooth preferences. Um, for AirDrop, you can very quickly change your AirDrop settings to contact only, turn it off, or everyone, all from within here, rather than um, heading on over to your Finder as we have in the past. Click on this again. There is a focus if you do want to click on that and set time to like not have any disruptions on your device. Your keyboard brightness, screen mirroring is one that um, uh, all of our teachers need to know about. But basically, if you're going to be air playing to a device, for example, the screen beam or the, um, I already forgot the really cool Apple device that we, Apple TV, um, you would utilize the screen mirroring feature. Um, or even if you were connected to a projector. Um, it's not opening up for me at this exact moment. There you go. So you can see all of the places I could connect to right now. But even better are the display preferences if I need to make a change, like to say extended or uh, mirrored display. Or in this case, I, I am on uh, mirrored setting. Okay. All right. Um, I do want you to know that as we're customizing the menu bar, since this is an item that I use all the time, I was able to add it up here to my menu bar. So. I like that a lot of these things are tucked away. And so I've started taking some of these items off of my menu bar because it's a quick click and I can find them all tucked here. Okay. You have a quick feature for you to increase the uh, brightness of your display, your sound. And for the sound, I feel like this is an important thing for our teachers to know about as well. If I'm wanting to use different sound, for example, on my Promethean board, my Bluetooth speakers, or the sound of my computer or my AirPods, one place that I can make that change. So I'm going to click the little um carrots let's see if it'll work for me the carrots disappeared there we go and so here you're going to notice the volume and all of the features that you're going to want for your use in the classroom i'm confused because this is sunflower can you guys all hear me <laughs> okay and i'm hoping that i can hear you but just in case i'm going to click this and connect to my airpods and i'm hoping that um can you still hear me but now I might be able to hear you if you say something because I'm worried that maybe maybe I haven't been able to hear you. Okay. I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? I hear you. Thanks for that. Thank you for that sound check, Earl. Okay. Um, if you are playing music, you'll see a music player appear here. And then, of course, we have our battery percentage. So if you're wondering, where did my battery percentage go? That's here. Um, as we customize further here in a moment, you're going to notice that you can add additional things. This little guy means nothing, but it's uh, like a, a user switcher. And I'm not really using that. I just added it while I was playing around. And then even a little shortcut to my accessibility. So you can add some shortcuts to places that you might want to be able to manage or you use often. OK, so that's it for the control center here. But I'm going to take you to customize it. Do you guys have any questions so far? OK, next. <laughs> In order to customize your control center and the menu bar, because I'm going to kind of go through these sort of together, you're going to head back over to the dock and menu bar inside of your system preferences. Okay, and for here, you're going to notice on the very bottom, this is menu bar. So we're labeled dock, menu bar, and then control center. Okay, there's only two items here in the menu bar. And so I just want to customize this and we'll maybe add some things to the menu bar. The menu bar here typically by default shows up all the time, except for when you head into that full screen view, right? So here it's letting you know that if you want, you can automatically hide and show the menu bar on the desktop. So right now it's on, but if I don't want to see that, just like my dock, I can check that off. And anytime I wanna see that menu bar, I would just bring my cursor all the way up to the top and the menu bar would appear. So if you, again, want a nice clean screen while you're presenting or sharing your computer screen to your students, you can uncheck that and when needed, take your cursor all the way up to the top and it'll appear again, okay? Um, and then if you go into full screen mode and you are irritated that um, this menu bar is disappearing all the time, you can also uncheck it. So when you go into full screen mode, you always have that menu bar there as well, okay? 
All right, moving on. We're in the last part now, which is the control center. We were just talking about the control center here, okay? So there's some different things that you can manage, but mostly it's the ability to put something into the control center um, or to add something to your menu bar. And so those features are here. So for example, I'm gonna click on Wi-Fi. Actually, let me turn my menu bar back on. There we go. Um, I'll click on Wi-Fi on the left-hand side and you'll notice that I have Wi-Fi showing here. So if you're wanting to clear this up and you don't wanna see Wi-Fi there anymore because you know it's in your control center, you can uncheck and Wi-Fi will now not be in your menu bar. Or if you're working with a student and that has disappeared, just check their control center. It's probably in there, okay? Bluetooth, same thing. If you're um, okay with heading over to your control center for Bluetooth, then you can uncheck or check off if you wanna see that here in your menu bar. So again, I would keep things in your menu bar if you're using them constantly, or you're okay with one extra click to get to it from the control center, okay? AirDrop is the same thing, right? Focus is the same thing. So basically all of these features just allow you to plop that into your menu bar or not. Um, keyboard brightness, the screen mirroring, I did add that up here uh, because it's something that I just want quick access to whenever I do wanna share my computer, right? You can add display, you can add sound, right? So I'll check that off. A lot of times um, on our old computers or older computers, I don't see it here. Now it is uh, a headphone instead of the sound icon, this icon. I guess we're not seeing it because I have my headphones in, so that's why. So, okay, I'm checking that. All right, the now playing, um, you saw that that feature was there because I had some music going. Um, accessibility shortcuts, if you are using those accessibility features, when you click to show in the menu bar, it comes up here to the top. Or if you click show in control center, it'll make that create that little icon for you in the control center. So you can easily uh, make adjustments to your accessibility features. This is one almost every single teacher wants to know about, and this is the battery. You can click show in the menu bar, the battery here. And if you check show percentage, you'll see um, that information here. Um, also, you can make it available in the control center if you're trying to go with a minimized look here at the top. All right, I'm gonna skip the user switching. You also have the clock. And so here the um, options you can change is basically your analog to digital, 24 hour and so forth. Um, but you can customize your clock if that's um, something that you're utilizing on a daily. Um, spotlight, this is your command space if you're searching for something on your computer. There is an icon here in your menu bar as well. Again, you can turn that off if uh, you don't want to see it and you're just used to using your command space all the time. Lastly is Siri. I say lastly. There's also Time Machine. I'm not going to cover that. But Siri as well. You can show that in your menu bar or not. I believe that's a um, hold down. The shortcut is hold down on your space bar for about two seconds. And that also launches Siri. So if you're used to, again, those different commands, you can launch um, Siri without having Siri up here at the top, okay? So we took a little bit of time to get to know um, our doc and how to customize it, and kind of place it in a way that you want as a teacher to be the most productive in the class. Um, we took a little bit of time to take a look at what you can add here to your menu bar, right? And uh, time to maybe customize or get to know our control center. And that's really all that I have for you. I wonder if you have any questions or anything that you've been trying to figure out on your computer that one of the ITS or I can help you with. And Danette, since you're here, we could have a little bit of fun if you want. Although I'm not sure um, if you can see us. Julie did just drop the evaluation form into the chat. And if you guys would like, um, if you're feeling not camera shy. Um, if you turn on your cameras for just a moment, we can go into the view for your Microsoft and I can put us into together view. You could do the same as well. So if you go to the view and then the view is that icon on the top, hopefully the top of your um, teams, it might be on the bottom, but click on view. And if you click on together mode, you should be able to drop yourself in a scene like, let's see. I'm gonna put us, if I can find the classroom, that's where I'm gonna put us, but click a scene you like, and then I'm gonna take a screen capture and hopefully tweet. You guys okay if I take a screen capture? Absolutely. All right, cheese, say cheese. 
All right, one, two, three. Okay, and then I'll tweet that out later. <laughs> All right, there's a lot of fun stuff inside of Microsoft Teams. Um, with that, we're going to sign out. Annette, do make sure that you complete that evaluation and sign in. And thanks so much for joining us for our quick session.